Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'in. Allahumma anfa'ni bima alamtani wa alamni bima yanfa'ni wa zidni ilman in naqamta al-alim al-hakim. My topic today is about the differential diagnosis of the mesenteric lymphadenopathies. I will discuss the common causes with some examples and I will discuss the less common causes also with some examples and I will give you some helpful clues for each diagnosis. The common causes include lymphoma, metastasis, appendicitis, mesenteric adenitis, Crohn disease, sclerosing mesenteritis, AIDS, and sarcoidosis with abdominal manifestation. The least common causes is ulcerative colitis, diverticulitis, scleroderma, mastocytosis, SPO, and celiac disease. Wibble disease and Kesselman disease. Here, this is some keys for differential diagnosis. The keys here the lymph node location, either localized or generalized, size, and the attenuation of the lymph node. The location of the lymph node, for example, if it is located in the right lower quadrant, appendicitis, cecal diverticulitis, carcinoid, cecal carcinoma, mesenteric adenitis, and the Crohn's disease are in differential diagnosis. Mesocolon lymph node common in colon carcinoma rather than in diverticulitis. Generalized lymph node, you should look for systemic tumor or infection or inflammation like lymphoma, infectious mono, um, um, mononucleosis. Size, normal size of the lymph node about 4 to 5 millimeter in short axis and tend to be most prominent in children and young adults. It is if it is enlarged discrete, it is non specific, and if it is massive confluent, usually malignant in nature and especially with non Hodgkin lymphoma. Attenuation, soft tissue attenuated like the muscle, it is non specific. Water density lymph node or low attenuated lymph node like TB, SPO, or celiac disease, and Wibble disease. Hypervascular or enhancing lymph node seen in the Kabusi sarcoma and Kesselman disease. Calcified lymph node seen in the carcinoid tumor or treated or inactive lymphoma TB most commonly. Some clues for the differential diagnosis for the diagnosis of the common causes. Lymphoma, usually non-Hodgkin lymphoma is the most common malignant cause of mesenteric the lymphadenopathy, and it is present in 50% of cases. Hodgkin disease affects the mesenteric lymph node in about 5% of cases. The lymph node result in other parts of the body, like chest, abdomen, axilla, and neck. Enlarging nodes often coalesce and become confluent, and you should, you should suspect malignancy. Nodes grow, grow around the structure, but usually don't cause obstruction for the vessels of the bowel. Classification of the nodes can occur usually after treatment. Here you see a large mesenteric lymph node and retroperitoneal lymph node in patients with non-Hodgkin lymphoma.
and this is looks like a sandwich appearance and here another patient with mesenteric with non-Hodgkin lymphoma with multiple lymphadenopathy metastasis the second most common cause of the mesenteric lymphadenopathy may be seen may be part of the generalized metastasis like in melanoma breast lung cancer you should look for tumor in adjacent segment of the bowel and often more subtle than the lymph adenopathy carcinoid tumor mesenteric mass with central calcification associated with dysmoblastic effect of, on the bowel and the blood vessels colon cancer adjacent the mesenteric lymph node very suggestive of the lymphatic spirit of the tumor pancreatic uh, cancer nodes in the base of the mesentery and this momentum is usually seen here you see patient with sickle carcinoma and mesenteric lymph node adjacent to the tumor Here, the patient with pancreatic carcinoma and with lymph node at the base of the mesentery. Here, patient with carcinoid tumor associated with central calcification and dysmoblastic reaction of the bowel and the blood vessels. Here, patient with uh, duodenal carcinoma, feeling the duodenum associated with low attenuated uh, lymphadenopathy behind the pancreatic head. Appendicitis commonly has a cl cluster of mild enlarged nodes in the right lower qu quadrant. Also, need to for diagnosis the direct signs of the appendicitis dilated in human thick wall adjacent surrounding inflammatory changes mesenteric adenitis right lower quadrant nodes are enlarged in the cluster usually related to underlying infection in the terminal ileum either viral or yersinia usually affect children and young adults and it is self-limited here you see a patient with uh, uh, mildly enlarged lymphadenopathy anterior to the right sous muscle in the right lower quadrant another patient with mesenteric lymphadenopathy in the ultrasound here this patient with the 20 years old woman and you see a right, right lower quadrant a small multiple lymph node associated with wall thickening due to uh, infection appendix in this patient is normal here another patient with right lower quadrant lymph node with with uh, <coughs> in the right lower quadrant lymph node with consistent with mesenteric lymphadenitis here you see a right lower lymphadenopathy associated with sickle wall thickening infection is most likely and it is relieved after treatment go on disease Common sign mesenteric nodes, fibro fatty proliferation, and direct signs of bowel wall thickening, etc. As we see here in this patient with the Crohn's disease, thick wall terminal ileum with nodes in human associated with multiple small mesenteric lymphadenopathy. Sclerosing mesenteritis. A probably an underdiagnosed cause of persistent or recurrent abdominal pain. There is hazy infiltration of a small bowel mesentery with the cluster of mesenteric lymph node. This 
capsule thin capsule surrounds the inflamed mesentery associated with halo of spared fat around mesentery vessels. Here we see this is pseudo capsule surrounding the mesentery with the small lymph nodes uh, around the jejunal lobes in patients with disclosing mesenteritis. Here is this is the pseudo capsule and this is the uh, fatty mass lesion uh, due to sclerosing mesenteritis with a small mesenteric lymph node. Here this is another patient with sclerosing mesenteritis. Another patient with sclerosing mesenteritis with with uh, capsule surrounding the surrounding the paniculitis. Here, this is the advanced case of the sclerosing mesenteritis with calcification. So this is simulating sometimes calcinoid uh, tumor. Mononucleosis may cause generalized lymphadenopathy, including the mesenteric. Consider in young adult with fever and malaise, look for a com accompanying uh, splenomegaly. AIDS, direct uh, HIV infection usually causing minimal enlarged nodes, opportunistic uh, infection, especially in patients with CD4 count less than 50 uh, slash ML. Uh, look for microbacterial infection with low density uh, lymphadenopathy and look for the also especially in mycobacterium AVM. And mycobacterium TB usually result in soft tissue density lymphadenopathy. Sometimes lymphoma increase incidence in a patient with AIDS and also Kaposi sarcoma increase incidence with patient with AIDS and have had a soft tissue density or hyper enhancing nodes. As we see here, this patient with Kaposi sarcoma with soft tissue density in the skin and axillary lymph node enhancing uh, and uh, mediastinal lymph node and also retrovirtonial and uh, mesenteric lymphadenopathy noted in the, this patient with Gabusi sarcoma with AIDS patient. Here, this is a mycobacterial infection with lymphadenopathy, mesenteric lymphadenopathy uh, uh, in patient with AIDS. Sarcoidosis. Mesenteric and retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy associated with chest involvement may affect the liver and the spleen with multifocal small hypodense foci. Here you see a patient with sarcoidosis with hepatosplenomegaly associated with lymph node around the portocava region and some lymph node in the splenic hilum. Less common causes, as we said, it is a look in patients with ulcerative colitis, diverticulitis, scleroderma, mastocytosis, spiro, celiac disease, Weber's disease, and Kesselman disease. Here are some helpful clues for less common diagnosis. Diverticulitis rarely result in prominent adenopathy. Colonic wall thickening with regional lymphadenopathy should be considered colonic cancer and to the above otherwise. Spiro and celiac disease may result in cavitating or low attenuating mesenteric lymph node. Nodes are vigorous on gluten free diet. Persistence of lymph node in patient with the spiro in patient with this rule, you should suggest underlying lymphoma.
to be considered in these patients. Here, patients with uh, uh, slow associated with multiple small lymph nodes and multiple uh, transient intersubsion. Wibble disease, it is systemic bacterial infection. Nodes have high fat content and low density, uh, um, low attenuated fat between 0 and 20 HU associated with the small bowel thickening. And here you see low attenuated uh, uh, lymphadenopathy in the mesentery and retroperitoneal region and uh, in patients with oval disease. Thank you for very much for listening. Hoping you like it and we will see you soon in another short talk.